Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action, and as you can see from these rowdy pistol boys raring and ready to go, we've got a bit of a vanguard situation, folks, and it's not what you would think. It's actually pirates. Yes, indeed, here with some Sartosa mass vanguard built up against a beastman. We've got a whole bunch of Sartosa militia, both the sword and pistol variant. Uh, some Morn Ghouls because Vanguard, RNS is hidden in the woods here with a fleet captain. We got, uh, yeah, more Free Company, more Morn Ghouls. What do you expect? It's a lot of Vanguard stuff, including a Haunter here for the Beastmen. Got a line of Gore Herds with shields, second line of Ungor Raiders, five of which are very good against uh, Vampire Coast. Poison Warhounds, and uh, let's see here, we've got Malagor the Dark Omen, some Shielded Minotaurs hidden here in the woods. Uh, some centigors as well, so let's just uh, let's just kick things right off here. Get nice and close as we blast off, and uh, yeah, right off the bat, we're gonna get straight to the action here. Goreherds charging in. They're actually gonna get their charge bonus, which is not great for me. Goreherds have a pretty solid charge bonus here, but just sheets of fire coming in, and immediately the Morn Ghouls get deployed as well. But they're uh, anti-infantry. Granted, the Ungor Raiders can come in and do a ton of damage to these Morn Ghouls, um, but we'll see. Got a Dance Macabre for extra melee attack on everybody. 56 melee attack, 26 with anti-infantry on the Sartosa Free Company. They have, what, a 6 bonus versus infantry, so very good weapon damage there against infantry-type targets. We're immediately just pushing aggressively on this flank here. We've got the Night Terrors to help kind of defend here. And uh, the nice thing about Free Company now, of course, is they fire while advancing, so these Centigors... You know, we can just move straight towards them aggressively and uh, not really care too much. They're still going to charge us straight in the face, but that's fine. Over here, you can see the Spearfisher's Net been used on this unit of Centigors just to make sure we can absolutely eat them alive. Need to make sure I win a pretty decisive mobility advantage. And uh, we're going to keep it relatively close to the ground here as uh, most of the fight is taking place within, within our visual range if we kind of... Stay in a nice uh, cam here. Ooh, beautifully placed spell there, though. Just rips through those Sartosa. Uh, what is that? The Bray Scream there from Malagor. He himself has been taunted. He's using Arcane Conduit. Summoned up a Saigor in the back line as well to start smashing some of these free companies. So uh, definitely some good back and forth at this point. Good response here from the Beastmen. They've kept this line of Ungor Raiders completely safe. And, I mean, none of these free company have any kind of missile block chance, right? So these Raiders are actually going to pay dividends here. Likewise, the Hounds coming over. Looked like they were maybe going to get a rear charge here, but deciding the Haunter and the Morn Ghouls, probably a little bit too much, going to come and try and shut down the Sartosa Free Company in the back line. Pretty good stuff there. Meanwhile, here, these Minotaurs just barely losing out to the Night Terrors. You can see the Night Terrors have taken a ton of damage. That's even considering they've been regenerating in melee combat, right? So they just barely winning out with those Minotaurs there. Another big Dance Macabre on, on these Morn Ghouls, on Aranessa, and the supporting Free Company as they just push through very aggressively. And uh, this is this is one way you can try and counter rush into the Beastmen. I mean, honestly, a lot of Coast players think that Beastmen is actually a counter for Vampire Coast. Um, there are a few things that you can do to kind of uh, negate that. I, if you play more of a traditional, like, kind of campy artillery style uh, missile build with Vampire Coast, you probably will get run over by Beastmen. You definitely need to counter rush or at least have some kind of heavy monster presence. Here, the Morn Ghouls have been able to sustain pretty well, but even at the same time, which it's pretty close. The Sartosa company are uh, pretty squishy at the end of the day, so like taking this rear charge here from these hounds, we're probably going to take some decent damage there. I mean, granted, the Morn Ghouls do have anti-infantry, and the hounds count as infantry-sized models, so they'll get beat up pretty badly there. But uh, as for the rest, you can see out here, we've managed to catch some gore herds. The uh, Sartosa Free Company trade very well there, and this is potentially the coup de grace. We managed to catch Malagor with a Spearfisher's Net, and then here comes Aranessa coming in for the kill with her halberd. Got some showy attack animations, kicks to the face with her spear legs. Or I guess they're what, sawtooth legs? Yeah, Malagor doesn't matter. He wants no part of the Shark Lady here. Goatman wants no part of Shark Lady. Let's just let's just make that very clear. And uh, he is now taunted and just uh, actually he's holding his own okay here. He doesn't have the worst combat stats in the world, but uh, Arnessa is a very very potent combatant in a situation like this. So yeah, Dance Macabre especially on her now, putting her up to 89 melee attacks. So Malagor is pretty much done for there. 
He's going to jump after him. Another Saigor gets summoned, though, right before he gets finished off. He actually shatters there. Critical army losses hits, unfortunately. Or that Saigor may have been summoned earlier, considering how low its HP is. But, yeah. I mean, that's, uh... It is what it is, right? Very fun game. Well played. Two Dutch skink my opponent there. Yeah, it's like, like I said, uh, against a traditional Vampire Coast, kind of like uh, campy artillery style build, this Beastman build would actually be pretty effective. Sort of counter rushing into that, either with crabs or with something like this, which is also a lot of fun, can be one way to go, uh, go about circumventing that, right? Kind of uh, surprising the Beastman, if you will. Up against this build specifically, I mean, the Minotaurs are a nice pick to be able to counter Crabs. Um, Malagor is a little bit squishy here, I will admit, but at the same time, um, you know, if, if they were to bring somebody like uh, Luther Harkon, he can try and snipe Malagor from the air just shooting him, or he can try and come down to the ground to kill him. Either way, you know, he's going to be vulnerable to a few different counters, but uh, generally I would say it's an interesting matchup, definitely from both sides, and probably the most even for any of the undead factions. For the Beastmen, um, like they have the best chance against Vampire Coast. I would even go so far as to say that matchup is probably pretty even. Um, the other undead factions can be tough historically for the Beastmen, um, Tomb Kings and and Vampire Counts. But we'll talk about that a little bit more another day. I do have one more replay to show you featuring the Pirates of Sartosa. So let's get to it. And this time, what would you know, lads? We managed to catch ourselves some rats! So, yep, we're up against the Skaven this time. We've got this massive vanguard situation here. Very similar build on my end for the Skaven. He's got some gutter runners with poison here, four Drizales, a whole bunch of clan rats with shields, a Lord Skrulk, and uh, yeah, Council Guard kind of all hidden in the woods here. Right off the bat, we're just going to be moving straight in, and my opponent, I don't know if he was necessarily prepared for a shootout per se, but he's definitely got a lot of uh, ranged units here, eight fairly elite ranged units. These gutter runners can trade okay with most zombies in melee, but they are not trading great with the Sartosa Free Company. I mean, granted, I do have three units kind of mixed up in here, and we're now taking some serious heat from those enemy missile units, but you can see here, Aranessa and the, uh, the fleet captain also start to come back, and we can just even... Even just disrupting, yeah, is going to be uh, cost-effective. We can definitely push them away for some decent cost. Meanwhile, over here, the Mongols move in. They're going to start to do a ton of damage to these uh, poor little clan rats here. A scroll comes in to try and support, but, uh, I mean, his magic will definitely do a lot of damage to the infantry here. Not going to do a whole lot to the Mongols. The Mongols uh, are in the Rod of Corruption range. One of the units actually taking a ton of damage from the Focus Giselle fire there, but... Can they focus fire fast enough? We're making our way up and around the flank here with these hounds. And uh, out on the far side, you can see I managed to spear fisher net. Uh, some of these gutter runners ca caught them with some Sartosa Free Company, so they're getting taken down here. Likewise, we get a ni nice crossfire on this uh, clan rat here. We have a look in the woods. Here comes Aranessa. She's going to try and get back and disrupt some of these Skaven Gisele units. I believe we have a Doom and Darkness being cast uh, from my fleet captain, Lord of Death, there, trying to route some of these units away. Don't know that we actually got any necessarily routed away, but we do have the Hounds coming in on the side now as well. Go ahead and actually turn off the forest cover so we can see what's happening in there. You can see the Gisales are getting eaten up pretty badly by Hounds here. Morngul's now getting on the Gisales over here as well. The Council Guard doing their best to hold out, and Skrulk is fighting, actually doing pretty good against RNS, all things considered. Skrulk is not a pushover by any means, and especially fighting on top of these Council Guard right here, so the RNS's attacks are getting distracted. 
Um, she's not going to do that great here. She doesn't really have the armor either. I mean, Skrulk, I want to say he has like 400-something weapon strength. Yeah, 442. So our Ness actually may not do amazingly well in this particular fight, but we have plenty of supporting elements in the area. Soon all the other Skaven supporting elements are going to be terrified away as well. Uh, their gutter runners are still kind of operating out in the periphery, but they really haven't been able to get any meaningful damage on any useful units. They've just been kind of shooting it endless amounts of free company right so uh hounds here being used to chase routing units in every single vampire coast army i would recommend at least one to two units of direwolves if not up to four this is kind of your only real fast attack option i mean yes you have bats they don't really do that much damage though they're not they're more of a, a tie down rather than a, than a true a, attack unit right so the, the Hounds being your fast attack unit also makes them very good at chasing down routing units. And it's just something that in the Vampire Coast roster you pretty much need to have. Um, uh, even if you're fighting other undead factions, it's still good to have that kind of light cavalry component in your army in my opinion. You can see here a Summoned Plague Monks. Summoned Plague Monks. Going to try and pull things back, but it's too little too late. A very short battle, obviously, with the massive Vanguard situation, but the Skaven... I'm going to get cleaned up here. They've got a few clan rats out in the periphery getting caught there. Over here, we can use the hounds to go after these clan rats. Get a nice charge there. Do some decent damage. So it shouldn't be too long. Skrulk is also now caught in the middle of all of this. He's getting routed, taunted, spirit leeched. All of the nasty things here. And yeah, the free company win the day once again. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, double... Free company pirate cast. I don't even know what to call it, but yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, these styles of builds for the pirates are something that you can use kind of in your back pocket uh, to surprise your opponent. That being said, you do have to use this sub faction, right? So, on the flip side, if you see someone switch to the Pirates of Sartosa sub faction, then you know. Uh, potentially they have the opportunity to do something like this or at the very least you could face some of these free company units um, so if we go ahead and just kind of remind ourselves what these lads are all about or you know piracy and and loot and booty of course can't forget the booty um, but they have yeah anti-infantry pretty decent stats they don't have the best melee defense in the world but 32 attack plus six bonus versus infantry it's pretty nice only 25 armor but 90 unit models they have also got rowdy so if their leadership is not wavering they do have perfect vigor which is uh, it's unlikely that they're going to have high leader high leadership in the late game when they need more vigor but hey it's a little something you know that definitely not nothing um, for the the pistol ones this rowdy may actually be a little bit more meaningful Because you're more likely to be shooting with these guys for a period of time and then potentially moving into melee later This rowdy will allow you to kind of sit and shoot without using up any of your vigor So actually for the missile variant that rowdy is a really really nice little effect to have certainly But these guys are basically just bog standard free company. I am like 90% sure if we go ahead and check against the Empire. It's been a while since I've actually looked at this, but Free Company here are basically, yeah, basically exactly the same. The Sartosa Free Company have a slightly lower missile damage, I believe, just to compensate, uh, no, just a little bit longer reload rate. What is that, 8.3 versus 8.1. So just a slightly, like literal, you know, millisecond, two millisecond longer reload rate, but in recompense, they gain that rowdy, so just straight up better version of the unit, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, very fun stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.